Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I say Occident, Occident, Ben says 3D model, 3D model, and I say weak, weak. Starting off the news this week, a device on NASA's Perseverance rover has successfully manufactured oxygen from the carbon dioxide from Mars's atmosphere. The device used for this is called MOXIE, and the tests ran alongside NASA's continued testing of the Ingenuity helicopter this week, as it attempted two more flights. MOXIE managed to produce enough oxygen for 10 minutes of breathing, but of course that isn't the only thing oxygen is used for. It's also used as the oxidant in rocket propulsion, and making oxygen on Mars will likely be a key part in getting astronauts back home from the Red Planet. In other news, this week's seen the naming of a new dinosaur, a hadrosaurid from Japan, called Yamatosaurus Izanagi. Based on some fairly limited remains, the anatomy of the bones known for this dinosaur have nevertheless allowed paleontologists to make some very interesting discoveries about this new species. Despite being found to be placed in a relatively basal position within the hadrosaurids, Yamatosaurus lived during the final stage of the Cretaceous period, leading the researchers to propose that Eastern Asia may have acted as a refuge for relict hadrosaurid lineages, including Yamatosaurus and others. So some interesting implications for this discovery, and it's always nice to have a new hadrosaur. And now over to Ben, who is alive. Thanks, Doug. Well, we've got quite a bit of Tyrannosaur news again this week, everyone's favourite apparently. First, a study that actually came out last week but unfortunately we missed it, which has found evidence to support the possibility of Tyrannosaur pack hunting. Although this is an old hypothesis that has been looked into before, there is some interesting data to support this idea. And in this new research, a Tyrannosaur bone bed in southern Utah has been investigated. The Tyrannosaurs are tentatively referred to Teratophonius, and looking at the geological history and organisms present in this locality, paleontologists have found that the assemblage of dinosaurs does indeed represent a fauna that was all living together in the same place, and therefore apparently all died together and were buried here at the same time. Various hypotheses as to what caused the mass death and accumulation of the Tyrannosaurs are proposed too, including poisoning by cyanobacteria, a fire, or flooding, though the flooding hypothesis is thought most likely. The study then goes on to compare this Tyrannosaur bone bed with other ones, finding that all of them probably formed in similar ways. Additionally, they point out that trackway evidence and the mass burial sites do seem to potentially indicate that Tyrannosaurids would habitually group together, so it's some more good evidence for some fascinating potential social behaviour in these dinosaurs. And finally is our second bit of Tyrannosaur news, as a study published this week has calculated the preferred walking speed of Tyrannosaurus rex itself. The paper explains how it's assumed that many animals will reduce the amount of energy they expend while walking by having gait kinematics that are in tune with the natural frequencies of certain body parts. Applying this to T-Rex, the researchers built a 3D model of the individual known as Trix and calculated what the frequency of the tail swing would have been. Since muscles in the tail are key to many non-avian dinosaurs' locomotion, they reasoned that the step of the dinosaur would have to match the tail frequency finding that an average preferred walking speed of 1.28 meters per second could be calculated. Although this is lower than earlier estimates for non-bird theropods, it does actually match quite closely with the preferred walking speeds of many living animals, seeming to indicate that this is a good estimate. So lots of great new studies on the tyrant lizards recently, which is great to see. Always exciting to think about what discoveries will be made about these animals in the future. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it from us for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you next week.